Hi guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing everything hip labral tears. I'll be discussing the most recent research for the treatment process for this pathology, the symptoms you might be experiencing, other hip pathologies that might be a cause for hip labral tears, and of course I'll be sharing some beginner exercises you can start doing from home if you think you have a hip labral tear. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dr. Becca, physical therapist, and on this channel I discuss everything rehabilitation, physical therapy, and preventative medicine. So first and foremost, I just want to explain a little bit about what the labrum is. The labrum is a fibrocartilaginous tissue that surrounds the acetabulum socket. So the purpose of this tissue is to deepen the socket and to also act as a seal to bone. So this is the point of location where the hip joint experiences compressive forces at multiple angles, and this tissue is there to protect that socket. So the leading cause to hip labral tears is usually due to an abnormal bone overgrowth around the acetabulum, which we call femoral acetabular impingements, or FAIs. And there are three types for this. There's a pincher type, a cam type, or a combination of these two. So the leading theory of its etiology is that there's excessive compressive forces between the hip joint and the acetabulum at extreme hip angles. And then this would lead to the abnormal bone overgrowth around the acetabulum. So in this video, I'm mostly going to be focusing on FAIs with combined labral tears as it has the highest prevalence for this pathology. Other reasons why labral tears occur are due to trauma, degeneration, dysplasia, and capsular laxity. So the athletes seen most often for labral tears are going to be gymnasts, dancers, soccer players, hockey players, and other sports that incorporate some quick cutting movements. So one problem that still may persist in studies with FAI combined labral tears is that they're finding that 41 to 43 percent of the population may be asymptomatic. So this is suggesting that there may be actually a higher prevalence of these structural deformities, but is not always equating to the symptoms being experienced. Symptoms you could experience for an FAI could be a sharper aching pain anterior lateral to the groin and radiating down to the thigh. Other symptoms you could experience with a labral tear could include a clicking, a locking, or a catching of the hip. So now knowing the symptom response to some of these injuries, provocating movements of the hip for more of a pincher-like deformity are going to include hip flexion with adduction and internal rotation. For more of a cam deformity, it's going to have a little bit of hip flexion with external rotation. So these physical exam tests shouldn't be used exclusively to diagnose an FAI with labral tear as they're seen to have a high false positive. Therefore, an arthroscope is seen more so as the gold standard to definitely confirm these diagnoses. However, prior to this invasive procedure, an x-ray is going to be used to rule in or out an abnormal bone growth, and an MRI with an arthrograph is going to help rule in a labral tear. Other physical exam tests could be done that are more specific to you and provoking your symptoms or specific movements in your sport. Now moving on to the treatment process, this is usually going to begin in a physician's office. Now if your physician has any suspicion for an FAI, they want to rule this in or out using an x-ray. So whether you have an FAI or not, the standard of care is going to begin with conservative treatment, which is using physical therapy. However, this plan may not work out for everybody due to differences in their age, their symptoms, comorbidities, and of course your personal goals and outcomes that you want to see from this injury. So therefore, I highly suggest you make your goals and intentions clear from that very first visit with your provider so that they can give the best personalized plan of care for you. Now, once physical therapy is initiated, an initiation of activity modification and anti-inflammatory drugs is also given. Now, if this conservative treatment fails, surgical treatment is considered based off of your image findings, your symptoms, and your medical history. So it's being more established in the research that they're showing athletes who are getting hip labral surgery first and then physical therapy are having better outcomes and a higher return rate back to their sport versus just getting physical therapy by itself. Likewise, for individuals who are over the age of 40 and who have a little bit of osteoarthritis going on at the hip, 
are having better outcomes if they're having hip labral surgery and then physical therapy versus just having physical therapy on its own. Again, I just want to make it clear that the treatment process for an FAI and combined labral tear could vary from person to person. These differences depend on your symptoms experienced, your age, medical history with comorbidities, the functional activities you may be performing every day, the biomechanics you have at the hip joint, and of course the sport you play that may be taking your hips to extreme ranges. Further, there are also differences in the types of surgeries you can receive for this, so I suggest that you discuss this further with your surgeon to see if you qualify for these surgeries. All right, with all that information out of the way, you now know more about the hip labrum and its etiology, the causes for a hip labral tear and impossible symptoms you'll experience, and a possible course of treatment you may encounter for this hip pathology. So if you found any value in this video so far, go ahead and give me a like or subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and hit that bell notification on. So moving on to the exercise program I developed that is more generalized for hip stability strengthening and gentle range of motion return and retraining. The just, I just want you to take note that this exercise program is not meant for people who've already had hip labral surgery. So without further ado, let's get into it.